folks, I'm Jessica Braden. I'm the Executive Director of Respond, and I'm honored to be here today to talk about um, warning signs about domestic violence. This month, which is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, we've been hosting an event that uh, features a warning sign every Wednesday called Warning Sign Wednesday. Before I get into my particular topic, I just wanted to put out a trigger warning. What we're going to be talking about today is pretty significant and very heavy for folks who have been affected by domestic violence or no folks who have. In fact, the topic is very heavy regardless. Um, so if you need to stop watching, please feel free to do so at any time. And also know that the Respond hotline is available to you 24-7. It's 617-623-5900. And the trained uh, hotline operator will be able to work with you around any questions you might have regarding our conversation today. So what I'm going to be talking about is strangulation. Strangulation is a lethal form of domestic violence. In my years of doing this work, I can tell you if somebody tells you that they're going to kill you, eventually they are going to make true to that promise. Strangulation can happen. Unconsciousness can happen in seconds, in death in minutes. For the person who is being strangled, they're first going to feel terror, extreme pain. They'll be violently clawing at their neck trying to release themselves from the grip and eventually become unconscious. How strangulation works is um, we can block the carotid artery, which deprives the brain of oxygen. We can block the jugular, which deprives the um, flow of blood leaving your brain and we can close off an airway suffocating somebody. Now why we're talking about this as a warning sign is that many victims who have been strangled don't recall the actual strangulation incident and that's because your brain does a really good job of shutting down portions of it so it can fight to stay alive and one of the things that it does is shuts off the memory piece so you may not remember the incident. So it's really important that we talk about what to look for when we think about strangulation. So the first thing that I had talked about is some scratch marks. You, you may see the defensive wounds on the um, neck of the person who's being strangled. Now that would occur if the person was conscious while they were getting strangled and aware of their surroundings. Some people can be chemically restrained and they might not have those same responses. You're going to look for um, changes in their speech when they're speaking to you. They could have a sore throat. They can complain about a sore throat on their neck. You're going to notice indications on their face, petechiae, so little spots in your eye um, from burst blood vessels. There may be um, the same kind of dots around the eye, um, broken nose, they, people may complain of uh, ringing in their ears. They'll be bruising and swelling in their mouth, uh, redness around the neck. Uh, people may describe it as being difficult to breathe. Um, there'll also be other physical signs. Uh, people may void their bladder or void their bowels. And um, after they've been attacked, they may attribute that to um, being dragged somewhere outside, inside, and not really recognize exactly what happened to them. Um, we know that when people are um, exposed to strangulations in their relationship, that it increases their odds by 700% that they will be victims of domestic violence homicide. Strangulation is an extreme sign of danger in a relationship. And we s desperately urge people to reach out and get help from our hotline or from any confidential source. So I have a couple questions that people sent us about strangulation and I'd like the opportunity to read those. First is, I'm sure I'd be able to identify strangulation. Well, I'm gonna stop there before I read, read the rest. Oh no, I won't. It says bruising around the neck, which you might see bloodshot eyes, which we covered, but also know about 50% of the um, cases of strangulation only show outward signs. So not 
all strangulation will show those signs. And in fact, many of the police officers who are our partners have, very, have a lot of difficulty taking photos and seeing evidence of strangulation. So keep in mind, you might want to be looking for the other signs we talked about, swollen neck, um, difficulty talking, difficulty breathing, having had to change your clothes because you had an accident, etc. I'd get my friend to the hospital and out of the relationship immediately. How is this a warning sign? So that's a great question. What we're talking about here is when people don't actually know that they've been strangled. The other thing is that people may know they've been strangled, but they don't understand the great danger that they're in. And we really want to highlight that strangulation is one of the most, if not the most, signs that you are in an incredibly dangerous situation. Um, the next question. My roommate spent a weekend away with her partner and returned with bloodshot eyes and what appeared to be bruises on their neck. I'm concerned because of their volatile history. I worry they fought. How can I talk with it? talk about it with her and what if she doesn't want to leave the relationship so this is a question we get a lot around domestic violence in general and it's a very difficult thing to bring up with somebody that you love and care about or uh, co-workers or friends or anybody that you're concerned that they might be in danger the first thing that I suggest that you do is let the person know that you're safe and that you're always available sometimes we get so passionate about wanting to help our loved ones see what kind of fear that they're in, we can get a little angry and demanding. You have to leave, you have to hear me. And really what we wanna do is let people know that we, t we are a safe place. We are not another angry, threatening person in their lives. But we are concerned and we are fearful for them and we're here when they need us. So that's number one. And what if she doesn't leave the relationship? Well. Everybody has to make a choice of when it's safe to leave them and in, uh, leave their own relationship. And in fact, when you leave a domestic violence relationship, you are at most risk at that time. That is the time that the uh, abusive partner will up the ante, so to speak, and it often takes several times to escape a relationship affected by domestic violence. And leaving isn't always so easy. We have to think about children, schools, work, job, where to live, how to feed yourself, things in the immediate, things in the midterm, and things in the long term. So one of the things that we suggest is that you call our hotline and speak to a counselor who can help you think about those things, both in the short term and the long term, so that your chances of leaving safely are maximized. Next question. My partner choked me once. They saw something on Facebook and freaked out. I didn't bruise or pass out, and they didn't put their hands on me since. I love my partner and I choose to stay, but what should I do if it happened again? So what I would want that person to know is strangulation is significant. It's very specific. It's face-to-face -face and very intimate. And if you are strangled once, you are in great danger. Um, I'm not saying that you need to leave your partner, but I want you to recognize that you are in grave danger. If somebody threatens to kill you, chances are they're going to make good on it. Please call the hotline and work through it with a counselor. Um, there are many things that we can recommend aside from leaving. For instance, batteries intervention for um, your partner. But strangulation is a crime. They have committed a crime by strangling you. So we really want you to think through all the pieces and see the global issue, issue about how this impacts your safety in your life moving forward. And the last question is, what are some, some other things we should know about strangulation? Well, about 70% of the women who've been strangled believed at that moment they were going to die and they weren't going to make it. 35% of those who report being strangled also report being victims of sexual assault from their partner, from the person who swore to love them. 38% report losing consciousness. And 97% of those who are strangled done so manually. Um, 
one in four women who are in high risk situations will experience domestic will experience strangulation in their domestic violence relationship. And like I said, the odds for lethality increase about 750%. So we urge everybody who's affected by domestic violence to reach out for help. Respond counselors are available to help them work through any, um, any concerns at all they might have about leaving or um, how much danger they're in. In fact, one of the questions I receive most often when I answer our hotline is um, does this count as domestic violence or how much danger am I in? And I'm always surprised that we have to justify the danger that we're in to feel like it's actually domestic violence because people go on to recount some significant high-risk indicators and talk about extreme abuse and extreme danger. So please call our hotline. It's 617. 623-5900 and uh, thank you all for participating in our Warning Signs Wednesday in supporting Respond in all our work to help end domestic violence in Massachusetts and beyond. Bye!